Whoa, that is actually really brutal. They just left her here? When we were here... I mean, all the furniture. It was kind of messy to begin with, but not like this. Definitely not. Knocked over a bottle of wine. Oh, we don't have science. <coughs> Same thing Elizabeth served me last night. Still just as disgusting. I don't know what's happened to this wine, but it's undrinkable. That's uh, intoxication, right? I um, I have enough golden elixirs. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. The handprint on the handle is really small. I can't imagine a man with a hand that size. It must be from a woman's hand. What? Can I trust you on this one? That just seems very... We can still look at the other two, right? The blade is short and thin. Well sharpened, apparently. It's covered in blood. <laughs> still fresh. Why would they leave the knife at the crime scene? That's especially something we need to think about, I think, because... We have Jacques Peru who is willing to admit to it. The lower part of the handle is unsullied by blood. The murderer gripped the weapon so tight that there's no blood where he held it. The handprint indicates a small and slender hand. Oh, so we didn't need to analyze this one, because it basically said the same thing here. It's just that if you analyze it, it tells you outright that it's probably a woman. Women. My mom? It shouldn't be Emily or Emma, right? It's not like she loves me so much that she would get pissed at Elizabeth for pulling me away from her. <laughs> There's not that many women here. It's only my mom or Emily or Emma. That's it! That we know of. Oh my god. The red eyes seems like it's something poisonous. Like, I know we see a lot of blood here, so maybe we want to say that it's because an artery got cut or something. But if her eyes are like that, then poison could be a thing. Jeez. I see no sign of bruising on the skull. The only clue is a scar from a previous craniectomy. Poor Elizabeth, she... She must have been very young when she went through all that. That's torture. She also has old scars around the neck. Maybe mutilations. I feel bad that on her last night, we... We weren't willing to hang with her, but at the same time... Then we really would have gotten framed. She bled from the nose. Okay. There's signs of bleeding, but I don't see any traces of bruising. Some yeah, poison. Poison. What a strange smell. It's wine, isn't it? I don't want to get intoxicated from this again, but I <sighs> Oh okay, okay. Laudanum. Ah. Certain courtiers use it to get drunk. If taken in large quantities, it can provoke fits of madness. Are you saying that this might be self-induced? Oh, okay, so now they made it so that you can only do one or the other. I think. Yeah. No, I feel like we do have to be a little bit careful still. Because we don't have that many royal jellies. That's an important thing here. 
There are numerous marks on the body. She must have fought like a lion. It couldn't have happened without a lot of noise. There are also a number of old scars. Hard to tell because she has a lot of tattoos. Difficulty zero. Cost reduced by three. A. People who scar themselves in this way generally do so to relieve some kind of psychological suffering. By trying to master the pain, they establish their self-control. That's nice, but it's not relevant to our current investigation, I don't think. Scarring, ugh. Scarring isn't very regular, but they're mostly from old cuts. Hmm. Sigillum de Amoth? She had the Sigillum de Amoth tattooed on her. The symbol of the living God. Written in the language of angels, according to believers. It is rare for someone to know about symbols like this at her age. Unless her mother was a tutor. Well, just because you have it on your body doesn't mean you know about it. <laughs> symbol of masons? What's that doing here? Oh, we can't translate it. Hmm. Did we look at the tattoos? That's what we just did. Scars? Scarring. Ugh. No, we did it already. I count no fewer than nine wounds on the thorax with a lot of blood. On first sight, I'd say that's what caused her death. Are you like a medical examiner? Because otherwise... I think we need one. An actual one. Oh, there's a lot of, like, point-taking things here. Ooh, okay. Some of these tattoos are veritable works of... What's that? The skin between her breasts is different. Bloody hell! This tattoo was drawn on a page of leather and stitched onto her skin. Probably during childhood. What? The scars are anything to go by. It's... The same kind of tattoo is on the rest of her body. Hmm. Okay. We still have to talk to people later, so I... <sighs> we have... Yeah, we have three Carmelite waters and two royal jellies, which translates to four effort points. I'm going to hold off on this one for now. Which ones have we looked at? Upper body? No wounds, but blood on the right hand. Nothing on the left except that tattooed symbol. This pinnacle is a trap. The wearers of the pinnacle thought that they were protected from evil by surrounding it inside the different circles of the pinnacle. So we know that Elizabeth wasn't really in control of her childhood, which means that people who were probably my mother my mother and related parties they put all these symbols and tattoos on her and everything is looking very culty right now if my mother is behind all this so maybe this whole thing does have a cult angle after all god everything costs so much no marks or bruising around the wrists it doesn't look like she was tied up or held by force Not tied up or held by force, but died a very brutal and violent death, along with some signs of being poisoned by, what is it, laudanum? Blood, but no trace of blows on the legs. More tattoos, similar to those on the rest of her body. Oh man, we are getting really... What? Sexual assault? Oh, I feel like this one is important though. Analyzing the blood? Okay. The direction the blood streaks caused by the wounds to the thorax show that she was standing when she lost blood. This proves that she was standing when she was assassinated. Possibly held by someone or something. Arm, head... 
legs, upper body, hands. I think we've looked at all of them so far. What about arm? There are numerous marks on the body. Yeah, we... Again. It's a little bit confusing because every body part we look at has tattoos. So while we learned a lot about her tattoos, I don't actually know what information that might specifically mean. Did we look at that blood? I think we did, right? Poor girl bled to death. Whoever left that footprint has boats for feet. That's at least a size 15. Where's a size like that here? Peru? Washington, maybe. A person with big feet can't wear small sh- Whoa, shit! Whoa, were you always here? A person with big feet can't wear small shoes, but a person with small feet can wear big shoes. Especially considering how the, the knife, it was held by slender hands. The clock stopped at 354. <laughs> if it was smashed during the murder, then I've just established the time of the crime. <laughs> How convenient! 3.54 at night. That's the letter that we read before. My dear Elizabeth, I'm writing to inform you of someone. Yes. We'll look around first. I... I know there's one more thing we didn't look at for her stuff, like for examining her, but I'm really, really low on effort points right now. Vials of laudanum. Ah, oh, we don't have science! The label shows that this laudanum comes straight from America. I wonder if Washington's involved. What? <laughs> no, okay, I mean, I guess. <laughs> it just seems a little bit... Hey, that product says made in America. And Washington is American. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Uh, was that bed always there? The two beds? Gun. A pistol? Fairly new, I'd say. And judging by the weight of it, fairly light. Yeah, don't examine it while you had it in your hands already. <laughs> A tribute engraved on the barrel. To the liberators of France. Oh. Hmm. There's a few dried traces of blood on the grip. Difficult to know for sure how they got there. But she wasn't shot by a gun. It's extremely well maintained. The barrel is perfectly clean. It isn't loaded, and well, there's no traces of gunshot residue. I'd conclude that it hasn't been used recently. Oh, earlier, Ja Peru was saying that he stepped in the pool of blood. So the footprints probably are him, but then this gun might be his too. Didn't he point a gun at us in episode one? Maybe it's this gun. Right. I shall have to find its owner. Oh, but we, we already talked to Peru and he kicked us out, so we might not be able to talk to him about this. Dang. Dang, we really should have come here first. 30 November. Yes. 17. August 24th, 1792. Yeah, we've read this last time. June 11th, 1791. A notebook written in Elizabeth's handwriting. It is written in a mix of several languages. Not too easy to work out. Elizabeth's handwriting? Ah, oh, fine. Fine. It's medieval Latin. Well, enough to translate a bit. He's coming. The demon is upon me. He's coming back to kill me. There she is. Death has come to finish me off. I've just run into her son. That was her last entry. What tortured writing. It does sound like it's related to my mother. He's coming, but then she has come. Oh, it's that. Okay. The talisman that I gave back to Elizabeth. I can't exactly say it brought her good luck. Should have installed a spy camera on it. A pentagram? What the hell's been going on here? 
contrary to what most people believe, a pentagram's not there to conjure up, I don't know, what evil or demonic creature. With the point toward the top, the pentagram is an ancient symbol of protection against evil. Mm, I don't think this is gonna be useful. Many esoteric rituals are based on this shape. Could Elizabeth have been sacrificed during an occult ritual? It's not like the killer used the circle to kill Elizabeth, so I don't think it's highly relevant. If anything, I think Louis will just say something like, Oh, well, she was afraid of the evil, so she made a protection spell for herself. Everything seems very culty around here, though, definitely. Oh, what's that? Can I not get around to it? Blood spatter indicates that the murder must have held Elizabeth upright during the attack. Even if Elizabeth wasn't very big, I, I doubt she wouldn't have put up a struggle. It takes tremendous strength to overpower someone like that. Different ways of learning the same information. We learned that by investigating the blood trail. So yeah, I really don't think we need to be exhaustive about this. I want to save some points for when we talk to people, because opening up dialogue options I feel like that's more important than looking at something static. Has Sam uh, finished with this room? Do you know who could have made such a mess of this room? Miss Adams, sir. We were given orders to leave the room as it was, so as not to rush her. Did she have a fight with someone to get the room into this state? Not that I know of, sir. Miss Adams would sometimes throw a tantrum, during which she would destroy anything that came to hand. Lord Mortimer told us not to enter the room. Thanks for that information. You are welcome, sir. Has Sam finished with this room? No, I haven't gone over everything yet. Uh, sir may take his time. When Sam would like to leave, sir has only to tell me. I don't think we... Yeah, I think we finished looking at everything. Basically, out of all that we learned so far is that she might have died at 3.54 in the morning. She was held upright by whoever killed her with a knife. Okay, we don't actually know what was the cause of her death, but there was something about how there's this laudanum thing involved, and she was probably stabbed? Was she stabbed so hard the blood went over here? And whoever held the knife had tiny slender hands. Could be my mother, especially because Elizabeth seems very afraid of her. That's pretty much the extent of what we know. Jafaru was here for whatever reason, and he's willing to take the blame for everything, but he probably didn't do it. Has Sam uh, finished with this room? I know enough now. Thank you. Very well, sir. Sir may return whenever need be. I shall guard the door. Okay, thank you. I really don't want to talk to Volner right now because we have like no points. Can we check out his room first? We know he's here, so he's not in his room. Yeah, Volner was around the corner, I believe. We need items. Where was that one servant that I could exploit to get free Sir items? Ah, oh, are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? You're supposed to let me go in, dude. Why have you locked your room? Okay, fine. We'll talk to him right now. We still have some Carmelite water, but yeah. Good day, Monsieur de Richet. Mr. Volner, are you looking for anything in particular? Next to Elizabeth's room? I... I... No. No, I... Nothing special. Hmm. <laughs> Lord Mortimer must have informed you of the necessity for everyone to remain in their rooms until further notice. Certainly, but I'm a guest, not a prisoner. I was looking for a servant, since we don't all, unfortunately, have one at our disposal. Yeah, right. I shall leave you now, sir. I will return to my room. Fine, we will go to your room right now. How dodgy. How dodgy. 
But I don't think anything good would have come out of me telling him he looks dodgy though, so that's why I didn't ask him about it. Okay. Did he not come back to his room? Or maybe he's over there? Would you have any royal jellies, please? Hortus Delicarium. Which one was it? The very precise layout and many detailed illustrations of this encyclopedia, the first written by a woman, make it a remarkable work. Hashtag. <laughs> Hashtag cool. A Byzant. No. A royal jelly. A royal jelly. Wait. The signs of obscurantism. Hey, that's not a scary painting. Why is your room different? Oh, thank you, Lord. We can't go outside. The sorrows of young Werther. There's a handwritten text signed by von Werner on this first page. Dear Elizabeth, I know that this book is but a small token compared to the delightful moments you gave me, but I hope that this will nonetheless keep the memory alive. Your ever obedient servant. So what? Volner had a relationship with Elizabeth, but that's hardly surprising given his fondness for the occult. That sounds like a pretty scary relationship. Your loyal servant? Okay. A table of alchemical symbols. Someone circled the zinc symbol. Hashtag. Hashtag. Hey, hashtag. Maybe that's relevant after all. Can we read a little bit about Volner being into the occult again? I kind of forgot that part. I know he's like the religious minister or something. Passionate about the occult sciences and alchemy. He led a war of religion in his country, Prussia. Friend of Sir Holm, believes in spiritual alchemy. Why does everything cost something? I just got one royal jelly back. Oh, okay, fine, 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 fine. Golden elixir. Yeah, oh! Well, not bad, but not the thing I would have wanted. A chest locked with a four letter code. Surely a word close to the owner's heart. Is that how we're supposed to figure it out? Knowing what's close to his heart? Zinc! Oh my god, I am 200 IQ. <laughs> that makes no s- <sighs> Zinc! When you say it like that, when Louis says, Oh, it must be something close to his heart. I would assume maybe his daughter or his wife or a family member, but nope, it's- It's Zinc. Okay. <laughs> the alchemist is a young man. Wait, hold up. I was so caught up in being happy that it was Zinc that I don't know what I picked up just now. What did I get from that? Did I get a book? Theatrum Chemicum? Occultism. Okay. The signs of the zodiac. Ooh. How come he gets to put up his own paintings? Oh. Royal jelly, please. Carmelite water. They say okay. that if you drink this, it gives you a real boost. That's still good. That's still good. Especially for difficult things. This seems like that might be it for this... This here. Alright. Looking up occasionally might be good too. Seems like there's a lot of things in the, the bookshelves. Coin. Yeah, your room is a little bit different. Very few creepy paintings. God damn it, where's that servant with the Yes! A fragment of amber. Yes! Yes, but <laughs> we have a high capacity, but nothing nothing to fill that capacity. The alchemist is an old man. You know every painting, huh? What the heck is this? 
Hey. Yeah, we can probably use the Devil's Thorn and stuff. Especially because we have so many. And we don't actually need it that often, too. Let's use it. What can I do for you, Duriche? Monsieur, Lord Mortimer has appointed me to investigate the tragedy that befell us last night. Oh, yes. It's horrible. Yes. How can I help, Monsieur? Hmm. One. Okay. Did you see how many tattoos Miss Adams had on her? Of course. Who wouldn't have noticed? Yes, but I'm sure that an expert like yourself must have an opinion on the subject. I do. She was seeking to imprison something inside her. Her own body had become a sort of prison. She wanted to protect herself. Is that what you're saying? Elizabeth was a flame, a candle in the night. And like all candles in the night, she was surrounded by darkness, by her demons. Call it what you will. One thing is for sure. She struggled against hell and high water not to let her flame go out. I'm surprised you knew her so well. Because you guys aren't even from the same country, which means that your relationship doesn't extend beyond this manor. Excuse me for asking, but did you know Miss Adams? Oh, she... Uh, not really, to tell the truth. No. I found the Werther dedication, signed by your hand, monsieur. Would you like to change your version now? Be careful, Duriche. Don't push your luck. My relationship with Miss Adams was pure and has nothing to do with you. Well, continue playing the detective as you see fit. But if I find the bastard who did that to Elizabeth, I will- Yes! I would have preferred a simple response, but I see I have my answer now. Nothing. Hold up. The vulnerability that we just found out about him? Diversion. Yes, if we do a vulnerability, we can get some points back that way too. <laughs> Did you love her? Not in like a boyfriend-girlfriend way, I don't think. Psychology? This guy's into the occult. Please, tell me a little more about the nature of your relationship. That is a personal matter, monsieur. Yes, that is true. So, tell me. <laughs> All right. It was passion. That's why we couldn't stay together. It scared her. It was passion? But, but you were her servant? Okay. Okay. Oh, cost reduced by three. Does that mean it's zero? It's zero right now. I can just ask this. Exactly how long had you been seeing her? I have no reason to answer you. I see. Is that what you want me to tell Lord Mortimer when he asks what I found out? It's... It's only been a few weeks. Wow. The flames of passion just ignites immediately, huh? I get the impression that your romance was over. Am I right? So? What does it matter to you? I would never have attacked her, if that's what you're insinuating. Who put an end to the relationship? You or her? It was her. It was her. But what does that matter? We both agreed. It matters because now I know who got dumped. <laughs> ah. Okay. Okay. Alright. I didn't have to use this one. Dang. Um... Where were you last night? In my room. I read a few ancient manuscripts before going to bed. But I didn't stay up long. I was tired. Thank you kindly. We finished. I'll have a look around and then take my leave. Do whatever you have to do. By the end of um, the first episode, one of my concerns is that most players, I think, will figure out pretty quickly that it's more beneficial to get more skills as opposed to getting particular skills higher levels. 
And I think the thing they're going to do to fix that so-called problem is by making everything cost effort points. But if you have a really high level in a particular skill, then it's not gonna cost anything because... Like, for example, me. My psychology level 2 means that anything that's under difficulty 3 is free to me completely. Questioning and psychology. I can probably use these two skills for free 99% of the time. Because I'm a detective at the end of the day. Gotta keep that in mind. Is that it? Did we look at that? The alchemist is a young man. It's all about the alchemist in here. Okay. We should go back to Lord Mortimer and try to think of that word. The four letter word. But what would it be? What would it be? Okay, that's two down. Who else is next on our our hit list? Lord Mortimer right there. And then we have Jacques Peru. Guessing we're not gonna go downstairs until we look at everybody's room. So Jacques Peru? Napoleon Bonaparte. Okay, do we have any jellies before we talk to him? 